I'm Rick Sanchez. Promise that you'd listen or be able to listen to the entire Rush Limbaugh commentary. Here it is. If I wanted Obama to succeed, I'd be happy the Republicans have laid down. And I would be encouraging Republicans to lay down and support him. I don't want, look, what he's talking about is the, is the absorption of as much of the private sector by the U.S. government as possible. From the banking business, to the mortgage industry, to the automobile business, to the health care. I do not want the government in charge of all of these things. I don't want this to work. So I, I'm thinking of replying to the guys, okay, I'll, I'll send you a response, but I don't need 400 words. I need four. I hope he fails. I hope he fails. Wayne Slater is with the uh, Dallas Morning News. He's good enough to join us now. It, it, it's, I guess it's okay to say, look, I want liberalism to fail because I'm anti-liberalism. But saying I want Obama to fail is saying essentially at one of, it, it, as what is one of the most precarious times in our nation's history, you want the country to fail, isn't it? Or, or am I reading this wrong? No, you're not reading it wrong. I mean, there is this sense across the globe and across America uh, that we ought to get together the new Obama compromise spirit. Let's get rid of the partisanship and the polarization. But within the Republican Party, a party that's lost two elections badly in a row, there is a debate. And that is, do we go to the right? Do we, we, we resume the status of the party of opposition, of clear, distinct, and sharp differences against our opponents? Or do we move to the left, to the center, hmm. and try to accommodate? And right now, that debate's going on. Limbaugh and John Cornyn, in the case of the Kay Bailey Hutchison nomination, I think are part of that expression. Well, yeah, it, it, it could also be seen by some as obstructionism. And some would argue that in John Cornyn's case, who's trying to hold up the nomination of uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, as a matter of fact, let's listen to what Cornyn says. We, we've got some sound. Let's listen to this together. We'll talk about it on the backside. My concern is not whether our colleague, Senator Clinton, is qualified to be Secretary of State or not. She is, and I intend to vote for her confirmation. But I also believe it's very important to flesh out some of the concerns that have been uh, raised legitimately by Senator Kerry and Senator Luger and others that I think uh, bear some public uh, discussion and some debate here in the Senate. I argued to Senator Clinton yesterday, or I didn't argue with to her, but I ex explained to her my position that I thought greater transparency would, would make it better for her as she enters this new job as Secretary of State. Because any cloud or question that remains because of the lack of transparency, the lack of disclosure, really I think hurts her and hurts the Obama administration at a time when we want to see it uh, succeed. You know, tr transparency, what he's talking about is whether there's a potential conflict of interest in her husband's dealings and his foundation. But, you know, you can't help but wonder, did he raise the same points when it came to uh, Dick Cheney's association with Halliburton and then executing the war and then getting no bid contracts for Halliburton? I mean, if he did, then he has a right to ask. If not, you got to wonder, don't you? Absolutely. And so I actually went back on LexisNexis and did a search and, uh, and during that entire debate over a potential conflict of interest involving Dick Cheney and Halliburton, John Cornyn's name appears nowhere. He was not <laughs> a major figure anywhere in this. And so this really raises the question, although he's raising a significant issue, something that's serious, the context of it is purely partisan. Cornyn is the head of the Senate and the National Republican Senatorial Committee. He is part of this Republican Party who wants to push the idea, the subset of the base, the hard base that says, we got to fight these guys. Now, the danger of that is you look obstructionist at every turn. But what Cornyn did yesterday and basically put in a hold at least for a day on Senator Clinton hmm. was to kind of throw dust in the air and to raise questions. And I think it's it's the mark of something that's going to come again and again. Let me ask you something else. Barack Obama yeah. is doing what he apparently said he was going to do. He said on day one, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to get all my commanders together. I'm going to talk to these guys like I think he's talking now. In fact, in, in the next half hour, he's going to be meeting with Petraeus, Odierno and Gates. He's going to be dealing with his chief of uh, with uh, Admiral Mullen. Uh, he had said, I want to end the war in Iraq in 16 months. Can he do this? And what's going to come uh, out of this meeting? Good question. 
Uh, my indication is, talking to some folks in Washington, yeah, it's going to get close to that. He basically is going to have the commanders on the ground guide him. It's going to be what they call a responsible or a serious withdrawal. Mm -hmm. But he campaigned for two years on this idea. And whatever the exact months are, we're going to see troops removed from, uh, mm -hmm. from, from Iraq. We're going to see Guantanamo Bay mm -hmm. closed. We're going to see these things he campaigned on, maybe not quite as quickly as he had hoped, but we're going to see movement in that direction. That's what voters voted for.